Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. This is my first video in a while, um, so I wasn't intending to do much. I've been busy with work, but I saw this this drill on Core 77 the other day, and thought there's a nice wire branch. I have got to try modelling that. Yeah, so I'll just skip through some photos of this product. So as you might be able to tell, this section here is not cylindrical. The top is cylindrical, but the handle isn't. So that's obviously something that's going to add some more um, difficulty to modelling the form. So I'll just skip through some other photos. Yes, so as you can see here, it's almost like a triangular, a, not a squircle, but a tricircle. And then the widest point of the handle appears to be the split line up here. A few details, yeah. So, quite a soft form, quite considered as far as the flow of the surface up into the cylinder. And if they did have any wobbles in here, it looks like they've got quite a matte, like soft touch finish or something on the back of the handle, so they would disguise anything. So, I'm going to skip through my file. I did try some other, probably three different ways of trying to do this. So, but in the, um, to keep things short, I'm just going to show this main way um, in detail and then just show the other ones very quickly at the end. Uh, so if anybody wants to wait till the end, you can see some failures there. Okay, so I shall roll back up through the model and roll forwards. Okay, so I've loaded those elevations in this guide sketches here. First of all, created a side elevation with my control uh, sketches on it. And then I've created the cylinder at the top, it's just the surface extrude. And then created a plane uh, and swept the handle form up and so as I said the handle shape this is I don't have this actual product uh, so it is very much a guessing game as far as what that what the what the uh, handle form is so to build this it's as you can see there it's a, a degree four spline five CVs and then I've just manipulated those around a bit there's the curvature plot um, and as far as I can tell, that's fairly close to what the handle uh, section is. It's extruded up, and then I've trimmed the top of the handle off, and that's basically where these blends sort of start from, where the corner blends start from. So that's an offset. Next up is making these uh, corner blends here and here, which are style splines, um, and they will be using uh, collinear constraints on the control polygon lines, like here, rather than using a curvature continuous because they are matching to a line. So if you're matching to a line, you don't need to bother with using curvature continuous. You can make them these entities collinear. So I've got one, two, three CVs that are collinear to this edge here. So that's your positional CV, that's the tangent CV, and that's the curvature continuous CV. And then they're dimensioned. Okay, so I've created a plane through the widest point of the handle, like where that split line goes. And then I've created, this is the trim. So we're going to trim this whole section out. And that's basically the edge of where the blend is going to be. Everything blends into the cylinder there. Um, that's 2.5 millimetres below the centre line. As you can see. And these ends here match up with these blends that I built. And these curves are parallel to the centre of the handle. And that's just the straight surface trim. Okay, 
Okay, next up is this main boundary surface. So this boundary surface is controlled with a 3D sketch. You can see that 3D sketch is just points on these edges and those points are then dimensioned off the plane that goes up the up the wide point of the handle. So those points are used to control the selection manager within this um, boundary surface. So I did try doing this with putting in the direction two splines, but um, I just found I was I was getting wrinkles and and just it was it wasn't as clean a uh, resultant surface as, as if I um, built it just with with um, selection manager selecting an edge and limiting that edge selection to those um, those points on that 3D sketch that I showed you before. So if you don't know what I mean by doing that, right click selection manager, you pick an edge and then you can pull the end point in and when it turns to a dot that means it's, um, it's clipped onto that point. So if you move that point around in that 3D sketch this uh, edge length will update okay so like that so that's one edge right click selection manager drag these points up like so i'm just going to exit this um and re-enter that because i have some other conditions set up on the surface that i don't want to lose so i have curvature continuous selection and the other thing that I had to do is change the alignment so this bottom edge here I've got it aligned with the ISO parameter imagine the ISO lines on the surface are running in this direction so I want these edges here to align with that otherwise if I picked next section um, you get some wobbles going on there as you can see which is not ideal uh, so that's why I've got this side on ISO parameter and at the top it's aligned with the next section. Okay, so this gives us our main sort of spanning surface. I've knitted that together. Um, so as you can see there, it flows fairly nicely off the handle and up into the top cylinder. Okay. Next thing is I've created a plane at an angle because I want to create a four-sided surface in here and in here. So I need to draw a section on this plane seven and plane seven is an angle Sort of want to split the difference between the angle of this edge and what we've got here. And the sketch is simply uh, select these two faces here, push S, go down here, intersection curve, and then I've made style spline degree five, so that's got six CVs. And on one end, because this is the spline here, the intersection curve, on this end I had to uh, make a curvature continuous constraint. On the other end here, because we've intersected uh, perpendicular to the um, X, uh, sorry, how do you explain it? The plane runs uh, along the axis of the cylinder, so this is a line, our intersection curve. It's a line, so because it's a line, I can just line up um, these one, two, three CVs collinear, and that gives us curvature continuous at this end. Okay. And then just made a little 3D sketch here, which is a couple of equidistant lines. Just give me a um, to split between this point and this point that I want at the midpoint. Um, create another plane through there as you can see and then I've just repeated the same thing um, 
create another cross cross curve section through here and it's basically done the same way as the other cross curve so I won't go into detail there co-linear on this end to get our curvature continuous to align and on this end because that's the spline uh, curvature continuous constraint and then I've created a loft why a loft? because I got a better result with the loft than I did with the boundary surface because I tried both okay so in this case the loft direction is going this way so our profiles are this edge and this edge um, and you have to use selection manager because the edge is full length so we just want to limit it back to um, this section here and then in the second direction I've got an edge and my two sections there uh, tangent face on this end and tangent face here and I've repeated the same over this side so I won't go into detail on that side then I've knitted this together which gives us this result here so it's not looking too bad uh, I'm just going to check this in Rhino with my shortcut flip that over got a much finer mesh in, um, in Rhino to, to run zebra stripes etc so I like to check this okay it's looking all right so next step is we need to trim um, back through here to give ourselves four sided surfaces on either side here so I've created a sketch on the center line which then creates split line so these are the dimensions for the uh, sketch delete face and I have created a plane which is an offset for the center line 12 mils up because I want to create a, a section through the middle of this boundary surface so in this case again I've, I've made a intersection between the plane and these surfaces which in this case because again like I explained before we ended up with a line because the nature of our offset is parallel to the axis of the parallel to the axis of the extrude something like that anyway and then made a degree 5 style spline and again made these 1, 2, 3 points collinear to this line and 1, 2, 3 points collinear to this line which means that it's curvature continuous and then made a boundary surface so in this case the loft wasn't as good as the boundary surface it's just sometimes you've got to try try both okay uh, direction one we've got this edge and this edge in direction two we have our two sketches being normal to the center line and this edge here being tangent and tangent influence is 100 percent on both directions and then i've repeated the same thing at the front and knitted everything together okay so that's the Y blend finished so not too bad a result I'm going to check this in Rhino quickly run my macro and it will dump it over into Rhino except the normals are pointing the wrong way that's why it's orange and I'll just mirror this Okay, so considering the section of the handle there, you can see that actually flows fairly well from the cylinder down around the blend and down into that sort of triangular, soft triangular form. In at the front. It's 
looking pretty good in the environment map. Yeah, so there you go. That's that's pretty much the the hardest bit of this model, the Y branch. So, and after that, I've just gone through and I've made this into a solid and gone through and split out details, split the form into various bits. Um, so most of these are solid operations. I'm not going to go into detail on these, these are pretty fundamental sort of um, functions. I don't spend a heck of a lot of time on the trigger here. Um, yeah, definitely not the focus of this uh, video, just the Y, Y blend. And then roll through the end where everything gets mirrored. All right, so that's the end result. So I said before at the beginning I had some failures. Um, So I'm just going to skip through quickly and um, just show you some of those. Sorry, I'm just, just showing off. Oh, look at that. Some weirdness going on with the lighting. Anyway, that's nothing to do with the surface. So I'll just skip through a couple of the failures. Right, first up, this was the one I tried just using the, uh, the method where you basically just create an offset of this form here, um, like the, uh, what would you call it, the subservient form, there's the dominant form, uh, you either offset it or create a, a trim that looks sort of like it, and then smudge a uh, blend in between the two. Obviously, there's lots of um, videos that cover doing this kind of thing when you're trying to do blends between pipes, and yeah, this wasn't going to work, as you can tell, because this, this fillet's this blend down here has far too much influence over the shape up here. Um, it's another one we tried. Uh, this this was partially on the way to success, so it's similar to what I did uh, in the final one, except I had too many patches here. Um, and then this one here was looking promising. I had some great flow between the uh, handle and the top cylinder, except the, for the fact that these surfaces, once you have to try and fit a patch in the middle here, you trim them back like so, and then try and put a boundary surface in there, and hey presto, it's too flat. That's because these surfaces here on the sides uh, didn't turn quickly enough to, that's why I've sort of got this lump going on here. Yeah, so that wasn't a go. Um, oh yeah, so this is just basically me working my way towards the final result which I came up with, as you can see. Yeah, so that is the, what's the name of the drill? Hoto, Hoto drill, brushless drill, USB powered. Interesting. So, uh, Y branch, uh, another way to do it. And as it turns out, um, works quite well with um, sections that are not, well, they're not too dissimilar, but they're not, you know, it's not cylinder into cylinder. So, yeah, quite a nice, uh, quite a nice um, example. I had fun doing this. If anybody wants the file, I might drop. Um, a de-featured version of this in there, maybe roll it back to before I solidify it and add the features on, because the focus is the Y branch, not all this other stuff. Yeah, thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Have a good night, see ya.